Welcome back. In this step, let's focus on some of the bean life cycle methods. As we understood until now, when we put add component on a bean, the entire life cycle of this bean will be managed by spring. So the spring IOC container will create an instance of this bean and it will also make sure that this is destroyed once it's no longer needed. So the entire life cycle of this bean is maintained by spring IOC container, spring inversion of control container. Now, let's say I want to do certain things at the creation of this particular bean. Or I would want to do certain things before the bean is destroyed. How do I do that? That's basically what we would be discussing now. One of the first things that this Spring IOC container does is auto wire in the dependencies. So depending on whether you're using setter injection or constructor injection, it would make sure that the appropriate thing is called and all the dependencies which have been declared are auto wired. So let's say you want to do something which needs all the dependencies to be populated. So you want to be sure that all the dependencies are populated and only then you would want to do certain actions. Those kind of things can be performed in something called post construct. So just type in post construct and type in public. Um, this should be a void method and you can create the post construct in here. Now I can actually do a control one on the post construct, import the annotation in JavaX annotation. Now, what would happen whenever we define a post construct method in here is as soon as the bean is created, this post construct would be called. So as soon as the bean is created and initialized with the dependencies, the post construct method would be called. Let's create an instance of the logger so that we can log something out. So logger logger I'll create as private private logger logger is equal to I'll say logger factory dot get logger this dot get yes I'll go ahead and import the SLF4j so we are using org SLF4j logger and same is the case with the logger factory oops it's already there I guess so logger factory is here so that's cool now we have the logger, so I can log at info level. Let's say logger dot info, and I would want to print some text out. Let's just print post construct. I will run the basic application that we created. So swing in five steps basic application. That's the thing which I've created for running the binary search. So let's run that. And when I look at the console, you'd see that even before all that stuff is done, there is a post construct. So even before any of the methods are called on the bean, so even before the bean is printed or something of that kind, as soon as the dependencies are populated, you'd see that the post construct method is called. So if you want to do something to initialize the content of the bean, as soon as the dependencies are available, then you can use the post construct method. A similar method which is present just before destroying. So this is called pre-destroy. So Let's do that pre-destroy and over here I would need, I, I mean, the name of the method does not really matter. The most important thing is the fact that you have the right annotation on it. So you can call it whatever you'd want, import pre-destroy. And this is called just before the bean is removed. Just before the bean is removed out of the context, this specific this pre-destroy method is called. So the pre-destroy annotation is used on method as a callback. On what things? On the instances which are in the process of being removed by the container. So this instance, the bean instance is being removed from the container. And in that kind of scenario, this method would be called. So pre-destroy, let's now run this. I'm running the basic application again. You can see that the post construct is called here and pre-destroy is the last one which is called. What I would recommend you to do is also try and play around by putting it in the debug mode. So you can go to the application.properties, put the logging level for org.springframework to debug and try and look at where these specific methods are being called. 
one of the exercises I would recommend you to do at this point is put the application dot properties into debug mode and run all the three things basic component scan and scope and look through what's happening in the log look through the different things that the spring framework is doing try and figure out how these things are different for all these different application classes and try and understand more about the spring framework at in 28 minutes one of the things which we really believe in is the fact that once you get to the working state so once you have something running try and play around with it try and break it try and remove the annotations which are present in there and see what is happening and we believe that most of the learning happens when you do that you can do that kind of stuff as well as you can look at what is happening in the log and playing around with working examples by trying to break them will really enhance your knowledge and also help you become a better spring developer until the next step bye bye